Okay, people. I'm putting on my minister hat again. There is a fellow here who does videos on the Bible and what he believes and, and gets people questioning what they believe and why they believe it the way they do. Speaking on the verses of the Bible. No problem with that. None whatsoever. As I do believe in God and Christ. But for some reason, there's a number of people that don't believe on God. Go on his page and mock those who do. This confuses me. Just as much as a Christian who tries to force their religious beliefs into public law. It confuses me. Why is this? Why does that confuse me? Because I know within my heart and hearts, I believe in God. I believe in Jesus Christ. I may not speak of him much. I may pray in my closet. I live my life according to what I believe. That God is love. Therefore, I can be nothing more than love. Because if God is love, God can do nothing but create love. So tell me, why do you an atheists insist on coming on to Christian pages or Christian comments and mocking them, trashing their beliefs? The most mundane of their beliefs, not even the beliefs of when they're asking to stop abortions or, or saying that blacks are not God's children or all these other beliefs some of these far-out Christians believe, which we will get to that. Why do you mock them? For simply believing what they believe and not Forcing it onto you. Are you really that certain in your belief there is no God? Or are you in fear of the fact there might be a God? And you might be wrong. Therefore, you must mock those who believe in it, because as long as you mock them and get them to stop believing, or think you get them to stop believing, you are comfortable in your belief. If you can prove you can turn a true Christian away from God, you are so right in your belief. Let's flip the coin now. What about you, so-called Christians out there, that try to push your religious beliefs into public law and on to others? Jesus never forced the twelve disciples to follow him. He invited them to follow him. And he showed them the way. Not by force, not by demand, but simply by showing who he was. And giving his disciples a reason to believe and to follow. 
You go forcing your beliefs onto others and force others to believe it in fear, they will never believe it. You will turn them away every time. Whether or not they believe, that is their choice. That is their right. That is something given to them by God. Whether they believe it was given to them by God or not. You have no right to force it on them in fear. God is not fear. God is love. So are you really that strong in your belief that you will go to heaven no matter what your neighbor believes? Are you so weak in your belief that you believe you must force others in fear to follow your religious rules? You run around and you talk about how God-fearing you are. You declare how God-fearing you are. You ask of others to post this if you believe in Jesus. Post that if you believe in God. If you don't post it, you don't believe. But yet the Bible tells you, pray in the closet. Don't publicly declare your beliefs. Show your belief through how you live. Not how you exclaim who you are. If all you ever do is persecute and judge others, then apparently you don't follow the Bible or God. Judge not, lest ye be judged. Pluck the log out of thine own eyes before you remove the sliver from your neighbors. For you shall be judged as you judge others. It is not your place. Find your place and go to it. Stop injecting your beliefs onto others with fear. It is not your place. Stop judging others for who they are. It is not your place. That is God's right and God's place alone. Not yours. And you atheists, stop trying to inject your beliefs onto the Christian. That is not your right. You are an individual. You have the right to your beliefs. And the Christians have a right to their beliefs. And neither of you have a right to force your beliefs on the other. What happens after you have passed is up to your own beliefs. Not up to the beliefs you force on to others. And let's get another thing straight here. You sit there and you say LGBTQ people are not God's children. 
you judge them. Because of a few words wrote in a book by flawed man. You judge them. Hundreds of years after Jesus was born and then died. You judge them. How dare you? How dare you play God? That is not your place. Have you ever thought that God put them on this earth to see if you could love them in all their differences? As much as he loves you in all your flaws and sins? No, you didn't think of that, did you? Have you ever thought about this? God didn't make the angel male or female. So even angels are part of the LGBTQ community. Are you going to reject them? Stop it. Both sides. You atheists, go be atheists. Don't join in on religious social media pages. Don't join in when you see somebody praying. If their prayer makes you feel bad or guilty for some odd reason, walk away. Ignore it. And you religious people, if you see an atheist, don't force them to come pray with you. If they choose to, welcome. If they don't, love them for who they are. As God loves you and your little flaws. Because you have many. And all your little sins. Because you have many. Don't expect of a nation that which you expect of your church. For the nation is not your church. A nation is made up of many different people, of many different beliefs. Your church is made up of your own religion and your own beliefs. Keep your religion and your beliefs in your church, in your home. Don't force it onto a nation. Allow the people of the nation to exercise their God-given right to choose whether they know it is a God-given right or not. Their God-given right to freedom. And no. That if they exist, whether they be LGBTQ, black, white, brown, purple, green, orange, it doesn't matter. Because nothing on this earth is created without God's permission. Even Satan must have permission to create on earth. And anything that God allows to be created on earth, God loves unconditionally. Does that mean necessarily that it'll go to heaven? 
No. It just means he loves them. Just the same as a father or a mother with multiple children. And one of the children is constantly getting in trouble. Right into adulthood. Ending up in prison. <coughs> Does that mother or father stop loving that child? The mother and father may, for their own protection, not allow that child into their home. But that doesn't mean they stop loving that child. They did what they had to do to protect their own life. Not because they hate their child. But for the protection of their home and the other children in it. God does not stop loving his creations simply because they do not believe in him. Simply because they may walk down a path he does not approve of. He still loves them. He will not welcome them into his home for the protection of the other children. But he has not stopped loving them. So stop it. Both your sides. Stop it. There is no need for it. If you are such a so-called saint in your church, then God demands of you to love the sinner just the same as you love any other saint. God demands of you to not judge the sinner. Leave that to God. Judge yourself. Do not judge others. It is not your right. Stick to what's your right.